look like we're like grannies. <laughs> <laughs> like, Cheers, my dears. It's time to go Vera. to Tesco. <laughs> <laughs> you do look very lovely today, by the way. Oh, you do. No, oh, I didn't put do. any makeup on, so I look like a shrub. <laughs> <laughs> a scrub. A <laughs> shrub. A scrub and a scrub. A Only scrub one would be enough, but. I want no scrubs. No, 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 Yeah. Mm. Right. Terry. Time for the interrogation part. Yes. <laughs> oh, wait, I need to introduce you. Whoops. Hello. This is my best friend, Georgia. Hello. We have been friends for 1800 years. <laughs> no, not really. Um, how long have we been friends for? Since. 900 masters? years. Masters? Yeah. Yeah. Nine hundred years. <laughs> yeah, I rounded down. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Most, most yeah. History. Which is yeah. quite scary to think of, actually, because that means we knew each other from when we were like twenty-one or twenty. No, twenty-one. Yes. Ish. And now we're twenty-seven. We met on the master's degree that we did, creative and critical writing. Although I, I always just say creative writing, and then people mm. kind of go. <laughs> it was actually more critical than creative. I think it, it was. Yeah. I think we only had like two modules that were like. Or maybe like one that was mostly creative. You had the option to like submit creative parts in like the assignments. They didn't really like it, if I remember, like the teachers. No. They, they were like, Suppose you can do some creative writing if you want. And I did get that yeah, impression. That sort of vibe. Mm. Like, I'll read it if I must. Mm. But... <laughs> Although I got the highest marks on my creative parts rather than my critical parts. Oh, did you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, that's so weird because actually my first question was when and where did we first meet? So. Oh right. That's okay. Very strange. This is a very niche memory but I remember me where I met you and it was in the corridor because you were waiting for one of your other friends yeah in that one building I think you looked quite like lost, lost yeah. <laughs> so I was like are you okay yeah, <laughs> yeah I think I was like is this the right busy, door wasn't it? that I'm waiting outside I think I've told you about when I got lost on a school trip right no yeah no oh. this is INFB life <laughs> um but basically I went to Eep War Museum fun oh, yeah. And then, yeah, they had a simulation of World War One in one of the rooms and um, with the bomb effects, which was great for my sensory oh. um, p profile, I started joining another group and then I realised I didn't know any of them. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> these people are speaking German, so oh, that's probably wow. not my group of people. And then, yeah, I got really lost and I held everyone up. <laughs> oh. And then when I got back on the coach, everyone was like, oh, they're really annoyed because the next stop was a theme park. Oh, so the actual right. fun part of the day and I just and I held everyone up well at that point I wasn't diagnosed or anything and like I wasn't open about my autism so I guess like if I'd had that as an excuse they might have been like oh that makes sense I think because we did the same masters we ended up sitting next to each other yeah and then yeah. we sort of formed a friendship and started going for like coffee and stuff yeah. and that was it yeah, yeah. I, what I wanted to talk about was like I don't really know what constitutes a friend. Where's the line between acquaintance and friend? Because I feel like in my life I've got loads of acquaintances, but then I'm like, when does it become a friend? Because mm. I call people friends that I haven't seen for like five years. But I feel like you're a very solid friend. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Best definitely. friend category. Basically, I just don't know what the category of friend means and like, when do you start mm. being friends with someone? And I feel like as we get older as well, I guess, friends you don't see each other as much anyway maybe i'm overthinking it <laughs> quite possibly <laughs> yeah it is a difficult one definitely mm. like, i think it depends on the context like if you're if you only ever see them at work or for ah. a reason then they're more of an acquaintance i suppose there isn't really like a right or wrong no. answer because it's simpler when you're young because it's like you're trapped in a class together or a school together and you're like you will bond because there's no other Option. Or in my case, just be on the outskirts of every group. <laughs> I think I think people just were like, "Oh, that's Neve. She's weird." Uh, we're looking back, actually, because I'm so, I'm quite nerdy. Let's be honest. And like, but I was so anti like trying to be some sort of outcast or nerd because I already felt like that. So I think looking back on it, I should have just joined like the nerdy people group, and I'd have been very mm. happy. But because I was trying to be cool and like not rejected by everyone, um, mm. I just didn't gravitate towards that group. I wish mm. I had now. Yeah, well... Cool fades. Nerd <laughs> exactly. is forever. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true, definitely. The well, early 2000s horrible. were quite a difficult time to grow up in a lot of ways, I think, so it's probably doubly hard if you're um, neurodivergent, but mm. that just probably compounds it. But it was a difficult time to be a kid anyway, I think. I mean, it's really difficult now with all the social media and like being on display and all mm. that and stuff. So question two was mm. basically did you ever suspect like I was neurodivergent or had autism and like which signs and symptoms did you notice of those things before I told you? Which to be oh, honest yeah. I don't really remember when I 
told you. I think it just happened at some point. This is interesting because I had no idea whatsoever. That is a testament to how good you are at masking, I suppose. Society kind of tells you autistic people look a certain ways, maybe, because I didn't mm. fit that mould. But then, to be fair, I was masking quite a lot. Mm. Um, even, like, when... I think it was sort of fading near the end of uni, but because I just got kind of sick of doing it. And that was when I kind of came to terms with my autism, I think, when I was, like, 21-ish. So that's kind of when we started becoming more close. That's mm. interesting that you didn't pick up on it. No. Um yeah yeah no it was, i i didn't know at all so yeah. it was it was a real surprise when you told me mm. um but i didn't think oh that explains so much or, <laughs> or anything like that i was just like oh that's interesting yeah and it was just part of you so i didn't i didn't think too much about it in that way until i became more like aware of the difficulties that come with it and oh. the, um and things that are just harder and just in work and like in life and stuff i'd I wasn't aware of it until that kind of thing started to become more apparent because we started to like grow up and you know do more things and yeah. leave uni and all that and you, you're kind of thrown into a world of having to do more things <laughs> as an adult and I suppose that's yeah I had a lot of meltdowns I think um yeah the signs that I think I show are mostly when I'm like struggling with like life stuff Mm. maybe mm. um if there's been like a change to my routine or whatever that's so big question three is was it a surprise when i disclosed to you that i was autistic and obviously the yeah. answer is yes yeah it was i didn't know much about it so it was like it was uh, it wasn't any it was only to do with me not knowing enough about the subject i think rather than yeah anything else really and question four was are you aware of this sounds really patronising. Are you aware <laughs> <laughs> of the um, common characteristics of autism? So basically, like, what, how is your understanding of autism, do you think? Have I taught you things about <laughs> autism? I hope so. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. I mean, it's interesting because it's such a broad spectrum um, mm-hmm. that um, mm-hmm. it's hard to categorise autistic people as they act like this or they have this or they... Yeah. They, um, you know, this is the way their, their brain works because there is a common element to all of it. I, I guess but at the same time it's there's that phrase isn't there like if you've met one autistic person you've met one autistic person I'd say the common element with everyone who is autistic is possibly a sense of uneasiness in certain situations that's how I kind of define it like a constant sense of sort of like unease we get quite a lot of input from the senses and stuff so I think it's that sort of natural byproduct of that because we don't know what to do with all the information that's coming in you can't just kind of box everyone in to like single boxes because every autistic person is different but like yeah you're right i think the main characteristic is the sort of struggling element and the anxiety element so uh, question five uh what's the most obvious part of my autism to you but i i think i know the answer to like what's the most obvious part of my adhd which is that I'm always late. <laughs> Unless I leave like stupidly early, which it never happens. I'm I'm always late and I, I do apologise. Like currently the most obvious thing? Or like just generally speaking or Um I would say generally speaking. I don't make very good eye contact, particularly when I'm thinking. But then I think sometimes just introverts do that. Like they don't look mm. at people when they think. I think I talk about myself a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, Everyone does. <laughs> but I like I posted on my um, story the other day. I, I genuinely do it as a means of like empathy and like because I if I can relate my experience, I'm like oh I can like understand the situation better. So I don't do it in like a selfish like everything is about me way. But I think it it just naturally comes to me. And then as soon as I'm saying stuff, I'm like why do I have to relate everything that everyone says to, to something <laughs> I did? Yeah, I think it's just like the way that. I relate to people really yeah um, no, that's that's fine i don't yeah that isn't something i'm aware of i think i just pick up on when i do it because i'm just like hyper aware of mm. my brain <laughs> question six what are the best things i bring to the friendship as an autistic person ah well lots loads of things loads of things it's all good things really i can't think of anything bad Oh, that's good, because question, <laughs> question seven is, what are the most frustrating parts of having an autistic friend? <laughs> oh, well, I'll do the first one, then the second. One of the things I appreciate most about that side of you is that there's no ulterior motive, which I really like. Um, like this Honesty one. is the best policy. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, I don't know what that was. <laughs> pen. Pen. <laughs> pen. If for some reason you can't do something or I can't do something you know if if we're not feeling well or we're just Mm. tired or you know something's Mm. gone on i don't feel bad about being like i just can't can't do this or yeah you know i I can't meet up today or 
you know and I don't feel bad when you do that because I don't and yeah. with a lot of friendships there's a little bit of tension that arises when someone can't follow something follow yeah. through with an arrangement <laughs> yeah and it's like I don't really like that about certain relationships where you feel mm. like you can't you have to kind of tread on eggshells and I really like that yeah um, yeah I, I think you you just tell me if you were upset yeah. kind of thing there wouldn't be any no S- like, oh, how does she feel? Is this, mm. you know, have I upset her? Blah blah blah. I do kind of over chair a lot, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is I, I quite like when other people do that because then I'm like, well, at least I know where I stand, you know, and like, what's yeah. like if I'm upset about anything, like I'll just tell you and stuff. So um, yeah, yeah, I like it because it's it's way better than being boring. Like you're yeah. you're never boring, and you're really creative. Like you have thoughts that most people wouldn't <laughs> in a really good way. <laughs> you're really creative. So question seven. I don't think I did the numbers right. Well, um, <laughs> what are the most frustrating parts of having an autistic friend? I don't even know if this is to do with your autism or not, but um, you're very self-deprecating, and I think that it doesn't frustrate me. It's just like you're so great and so creative <laughs> and clever and, <laughs> and charming that Aww. it's like I wish you weren't as self-deprecating as you were. Aww. But I don't know if that's much to do with your autism mm. or not. It's I think it could just be part difficult. of my personality maybe. Because when I was like younger, I guess I didn't really have a lot of confidence in myself. Mm. And like, to be honest, I still don't have that much confidence. Like on the camera I probably seem really confident, but that's because I'm like I feel like I put a slight persona on. Mm. <laughs> like an <laughs> invisible hat. Yeah, no, I definitely think I need to work on my confidence and stuff. Um but thank mm. you, you're very kind. No, no, it's just true. I think it's a shame because I think my ADHD gives me a lot of creativity, but it's just hard to channel that creativity into something that's actually tangible. Mm. Um, but you really help bring it out of me because oh. whenever we hang out, I always tell you this, but I always get really inspired to write afterwards. Mm. I think you've got like a writerly energy coming oh, off you. That's so lovely. So, um, yeah, oh, maybe it's you. also because we will hang out in bookshops a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even something you have to work on. It's not like, oh, I must stop doing this about myself it's something I yeah. need to, it's not even something you have to change about yourself it's just like something you need to know that you don't Aww. need to self deprecate or you know think think Aww. ill of yourself it could be quite a British thing as well because I think yeah. we, we downplay everything about ourselves I mean everything's intertwined like you say it could be a British thing and a lot of the time women are expected to kind of downplay their achievements and kind of not yeah not show off and that's I mean very true that's changing a bit now probably but mm. certainly growing up I really did feel like that question eight do you know what my special interests are oh yeah I'll probably get be quite good on this one yay um sims yes which but, one? Oh, <laughs> I was getting all fired up then I was like I'm gonna storm this I to be fair I like all the sims games but which, which one's my favorite one but that's my special interest. I don't know anything about The Sims. <laughs> you really like The Sims? Yes, fine. <laughs> what, what is your favourite? Sims 2. Oh, okay. Mm. Sims 2, Sims mm-hmm. 2, Sims 2. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll look for merch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's very hard to find, actually. I was on Etsy the other day, yeah. weirdly, looking at Sims 2 stuff, and there's just kind of like, not that much. It, no, I, continue um, on your role that I, I broke with my... No, no, I will. I just, I had a thought. Um, yeah. Didn't Katy Perry do a song <laughs> in... Um, yes. in sim language yeah. and I remember seeing that and yes. thinking it was edited um, I think Katy Perry's the most famous one they did lots of other I think the uh, is it like Flaming Lips they they, oh, they right. did a cover as well did they? And stuff. yeah I think it was just to get their music to see I don't know some, some <laughs> good song yeah it weirdly became a thing um, and she also released a stuff pack called Katy Perry Sweet Treats which is just the joke of the community because it was stuff that literally no one would ever use in their whole life. And Lily Allen, she recorded Smile. Really? In what Simlish. Is... Really? Yeah. And it's funny because they changed it to Smeal. <laughs> I'll have to show you it later. Yeah, Yeah, I'll have to listen to that. Uh, any other special interests? Yeah, books. Mm-hmm. I did a TikTok on this. Oh my God, no. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> yeah, all I need to do is follow you on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, Sims books um mm-hmm. i'd say films like kind of um uh, cinematic yeah aspects of films like my special interest is more in sort of like cinematography and like mm. filmography because like i find it really hard to sit still and watch films but like i like knowing how they're made and like it actually goes back to when i was literally like 10 i had like a fake director's chair made i don't know if i oh, showed you yeah. it with my name on and stuff oh. like so i think like one of my my dream careers would be to be some sort of director or producer or something and anything else 
like things to do with um japan ah and, yes um, dan and phil are still part of my oh yeah identity. yeah yeah I was coming around to yeah, guys, yeah. yeah. So Dan and Phil's another one, mm. um, and I still watch their stuff and have to watch it. It's like one of those things that if it comes up, I have to watch it. So oh. it's like part of my core. Oh yeah, and um, before it cut, we were talking about maps and how much I love maps. Yeah, because maps are great, but you you do not like maps. I think they're awful. <laughs> you yeah. know, back in the day, they uh. were useful because they were the only option you had to be able to get to a bakery. Oh. <laughs> The old maker. bakery, <laughs> a <laughs> candlestick <laughs> maker. Anyway, I don't like maps, but you like maps, which is fine. It's the only thing I disagree with you about. The minute I look at a map, I clam up. I, I don't know what it is about maps. I just like them. Like I also quite like maps of like the underground and stuff like that. I just oh. maybe it's to do with planning and like being organised in my head. Maybe because I always have to like plan trips and stuff, so maybe that's why it just makes me feel like more on top of it. Mm. Are you good at knowing where things are like in real life? Because I remember phoning up, I think it was either you or my dad, and um, I said, I don't know where I am. (laughs) And Um, was it you? um, Maybe. I'm very good at visual signals, so if I like know that there's a sign that says something or like. Or like a, I don't know, a weirdly shaped bush. Yeah. I'm good yeah. at like computing that information and being like, ah, oh, that's where the place is. There's that bush that's shaped like Shirley Bassey. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that's literally the first thing I thought yeah. when I said that? Yeah. <laughs> We've passed that bush three, three times, times already. already. <laughs> a lot of our friendship is quoting Shrek. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Because Shrek is love and Shrek, Shrek is, is life. I I had this situation where I was like, I don't know where I am. I think and maybe I remember this. Yeah, and I. Oh, and was it in it the was, park, maybe? Yeah, and I was like, I'm by a big tree. You have to be more specific. <laughs> I was panicking. Oh. And I was like, I'm by a big tree, but I don't know where, how else to describe <laughs> it. I don't know. Like, if someone says, well, where are you? It's like, I don't know where I am. That's the point. So I'm by a big tree, and you'll have to glean, oh. the, glean the information from that. <laughs> oh, that's very interesting, because my brain works in the sense that, like, I will, I also find it really hard to describe where I am, to be honest. I always have a map in my head of, like, how I got to a place. So then I sort of use the the places that I saw on the way to sort of figure out where I am. Yeah. But then I do have a dad who's, like, super map man in the brain. So um, I think I might have inherited that. It's it's really useful. It's really cool. It is a useful skill. Yeah. Um, But like like you said, nowadays, it's not as as useful, given that we have, like, Google Maps and stuff. It's still useful. Um, It's still useful. It's probably just me being jealous your brain is filled up with much more interesting and unique and creative things than maps so um that's that's nice of you to say it's it's true (laughs) it's true true. i've read your literature no um and you listen to your songs oh thank you which i will plug later thank you in a 10 minute segment oh yeah at least (laughs) she did pay me um so basically question nine is Mm. do you feel that other people can tell i'm autistic or adhd I know it's, I'm asking you, but like when we're in like a cafe or something, I don't have very good control over the volume of my voice. <laughs> and I often feel quite sorry for people sitting around us because I think I'm talking too loud. Really? And they're like hearing my whole life story. <laughs> and I think that's when I think other people can tell that I'm neurodivergent. I don't notice that you have a loud voice in cafes, but mm. maybe because... I'm engrossed in the conversation, so I don't yeah. really notice in that way. I think you're right. I think others can't tell. And also, because I've had a good role model, as I do say myself, myself in my mum, who's like the most sociable lady in the world mm. and, and has like a friend <laughs> everywhere. I think I kind of like emulate what she does a lot. So right. then I think people think I'm like, you know, socially, soci, soci lady, <laughs> sociable lady, sociable when, lady when it's actually like just sort of a learnt behaviour. I think I do mask quite a lot when I'm around people I don't know, so. Mm, yeah, it, it depends on who they are as well, like what their and backstory the, is. And their knowledge of, their yeah. Knowledge of it. Question 10, which mm. is the last, so, sort of last question. Mm. What's the most memorable slash important lesson I've taught you as an autistic friend? Ooh, I've probably learnt a lot more about the nuances of it, of autism, than I would have done otherwise. That's that's a definite ironically the whole discourse around autism until quite recently has been quite black and white which is yeah. ironic in that um it's this cliche that autistic people see everything it's like yeah, you know, it, yeah. it's like this or it's like this with no gray mm. area kind of thing there's a lot Neuro- more representation now i think as well yeah yeah like the whole neurotypical mm. discourse around it has changed quite a lot for the better i think but only very recently it's nice to have been able to 
kind of be a part of it in a way because I have learned from you and I've learned things that I wouldn't know otherwise definitely I, I feel a little more like plugged into the world <laughs> oh that's good <laughs> having um having made friends with you sorry I know this is a really hard question it's quite a hard question I'm yeah. sorry no, no. I put it right on the end because <laughs> <laughs> obviously we see each other like basically the same day every week and stuff and mm. I think that's also like we're quite an autistic thing because we like seeing each other on a schedule and stuff and, and I feel like we kind of adhere to that quite well and that really suits me mm. But I think it's it comes kind of so naturally that I don't think we even really think about it. I think other people would be like, oh, you hang out at, at you know, 1pm on every Sunday. <laughs> That's very rigid. Yeah, mm. just thank you for accommodating that. No, no, it's, I'm happy to do that. <laughs> I'm very happy to do that. I quite like a routine, to be yeah. honest. So. The only thing left, really, is um, mm. anything else you want to say? Add, plug? Plug. Say add plug. <laughs> Say add plug. Um, thank you for having me. Aww. I've had a really, really nice time as oh, always. I'm I was glad. had a nice time. We had a nice chat. We did. We yeah. should have a podcast. Yeah. When, yeah. When oh, that's another called? special interest that I forgot to. Sorry. Red handed. True crime. Yes. Yeah. Red handed. The podcast. That's very yeah. true. Actually, mm. I forgot about that one on my TikTok. I yeah. listen to like every one of their things. Yeah, that's very mm. true. Yeah, that's. I knew there was one that I'd forgotten. Mm. And it's like it's definitely yeah, it's in there. It's yeah. Rattling around in my brain. And, yeah. yeah. Red handed is a great podcast. Yes. True crime podcast. Yeah. I recommend. I'll link them in the box below. The description below. The description below. They used to call it the doobly doo. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's like a, a Green Brothers thing, but um, oh okay, I never said that because I put it sound silly. Um, <laughs> Georgia does Muzak, yes, and not Muzak as in like <laughs> elevator like Muzak. Kenny ding, G. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> no, like actual proper amazing music. Oh. Proper amazing. She's got an amazing TikTok um, oh. that she started recently with some great editing, which I'm very impressed. Oh, thank you. And um, oh. has got a new EP coming out oh. called Voices. When is it? When is it released? 29th of July. Ah! Mm. So yeah. please go follow her on Spotify and then just stream it. Just leave it on in the background and stream it all the time. And then we'll, we'll wrap yeah, up the Yeah, that's streams. the way to do it, yeah. actually. Yeah. <laughs> but it's genuinely amazing music. And um, oh, honestly, it's even better live if you can see her live. Oh, thank so, you. Yeah. Mm. The voice of the next generation. Oh, Star Trek. That, that's a, yeah, I don't know where I went with that. Oh, um, that's so nice. Thank you. No, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, she's amazing. So yeah, oh. please, please check out her stuff lovely okay oh, so cool. thank you for your service <laughs> <laughs> all my warmest wishes <laughs> no. sincerest regards tinkety tong <laughs> yes i hope this reaches you in good stead oh yeah i hope this email On the post finds mule. You. i hope this email finds you well <laughs> oh, i always end up saying that do you? Yeah, I hope this message See, finds I you say well. best wishes and I'm like, I shouldn't say that because I barely know you. Best wishes. <laughs> I think you're meant to say kind regards till you know them, but then I just always say best wishes. Anyway. See you later, everyone. I hope you Bye. enjoyed the video. Bye. Bye.